Do you need a passport to go on a cruise? This is a question a lot of people want to know, and I'll have the answer up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RealCaribbeanBlog.com. So, do you need a passport to go on a cruise? The answer is, it depends, and it can be yes or no. Whether you need a passport depends on a lot of factors, including where you're sailing from and where you're getting off the ship, which country you're a citizen of, and which line you're cruising with. There's no definitive answer, and let's face it, it can be a little confusing. So today, I wanted to jump through exactly what you need to know about whether or not you need a passport or should get a passport. Those are two very different and yet important questions. So where can you cruise without a passport? If you're a U.S. citizen and don't have a passport, there are some options for you. Most cruises, including Royal Caribbean and Celebrity Norwegian and Carnival, will allow you to do a closed-loop sailing without a passport. These are cruises that begin in a U.S. port, go somewhere else, but then return to the same U.S. port. They depart from places like Miami or Seattle or Los Angeles or Galveston or even New York. This also applies to U.S. territories such as San Juan, Puerto Rico, or even St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands. However, if you embark in a U.S. port and then disembark in another port, well, it's not the same as a closed-loop sailing. For example, a Panama Canal cruise that begins in Miami and ends in Los Angeles requires a passport. Longer cruises, like sailings that sail round-trip but go to countries outside North and Central America, will also require a passport. Any cruise that where you need to fly to or from a foreign country, including Canada, will require a passport. Now, like everything in life, there are exceptions. Because even if you're on a closed-loop sailing from the U.S., you're a U.S. citizen, certain islands in the Caribbean, like Guadalupe, Martinique, St. Bart's, and Barbados, require a passport for entry. So it's your responsibility to figure out if the islands you're visiting have such requirements to ensure that you have the right passport before you go. If you don't have a passport and your cruise ship stops at one of these islands, you'll have to stay on board. And if you want to cruise without a passport, then you're going to make sure you choose itineraries where you know you can get off the ship and enjoy a day in port. Now, if that makes sense, wait until you have to go to an Alaska cruise because it can be even more confusing here. Let's say your cruise visits a port in Canada. You can cruise without a passport to Canada and do things in those places. But to cross over into the Canadian province by rail or even car, you're going to need a passport. You can visit Alaska on a round-trip Seattle cruise without a passport, but if you want to book a rail journey, like the White Pass Yukon route, which is really popular, and that goes into Canada, well, that's not going to work because you're going to need a passport for that one. So you'd have to take a shorter summit tour where you don't go into Canada for that one. So if you don't have a passport, what ID do you need? Well, you're going to need basically proof of identity and U.S. citizenship in the form of a state-issued birth certificate. It also requires a government-issued driver's license or photo ID with your name and date of birth. Another option you could get instead of a passport book is a passport card, which is a photo ID issued by the government that proves your citizenship and permits border crossings by land and sea from Canada, Mexico, the Caribbean, and Bermuda. The problem with the passport card is you can't fly with it. So if you were to get stuck somewhere, let's say, God forbid, some awful injury happened to you or you missed the ship for whatever reason, if you had to fly home, the passport card would not work for you and basically you'd be stuck without a passport. If you're cruising with the kids that are under the age of 16 on a closed-loop cruise, you'll need to bring a certified copy of their original birth certificate for identification. They do not need photo ID. Quite frankly, most of them don't have photo ID if they're under the age of 16. But no matter what documents you bring, it's a really good idea to bring copies of them, either paper ones or photos on your phone, when you leave the ship in case something happens while you're ashore. Always carry some type of photo identification, like a driver's license, when you head into port. By the way, Royal Caribbean emphasizes that baptismal papers and hospital certificates of birth are not acceptable. Voter registration cards and social security cards are not considered proof of citizenship. Now, so far, we've talked about cruises that basically go to the Caribbean or somewhere in the Western Hemisphere. But many countries outside of North America do require a passport and visas even when they go on these particular sailings. This includes countries in Europe, Asia, Central and South America. International sailings, cruises that begin outside the U.S., U.S. citizens are required a valid passport and the corresponding visa required for entry and exit into the country. If you're watching this from Canada, well, then non-U.S. citizens will need a valid passport, and in some cases, a visa. If you live in the U.S., you'll need the original copy of your alien registration card, ARC or green card, and any other documentation of the countries on your itinerary required due to your alien status. All Canadian landed immigrants, inclusive of those who are citizens of the British Commonwealth who reside in Canada, must have valid passports and U.S. visas. Also required is the original copy of your permanent resident card, the PR card, formerly the IMM-1000, 
or with respect to any country on the itinerary, any other travel documentation required because of alien status. Now that I've talked about when you do or don't need a passport, now I'm going to talk about whether you should get a passport and, quite frankly, why everyone should get a passport. Regardless of what the minimum requirements are for travel, I really recommend everybody get a passport. Passports do have additional costs to them, especially for kids. I get that. But I really feel the advantages of having a passport far outweigh the cost and work required to get one. Simply put, having a passport makes traveling significant easier and simpler. Having a passport on a cruise means not just an easier embarkation and disembarkation process, which, by the way, it really does, but it protects you against an unexpected situation that may occur during the course of the cruise. It's just flying out of the U.S. to meet a ship at the next available port if you were to miss scheduled embarkation or entering the U.S. At, at the end of the cruise, needing to fly to the U.S. before the cruise ends because of a medical, family, personal, or business emergency. This is a really, really critical thing. Certainly, a lot of people will cruise without a passport and very likely will not run into any issues. But the concern without having a passport is if an emergency occurs, only an official passport will allow you to easily and quickly fly from a foreign port to another country back home. Not having a passport means you'll have to travel to a U.S. embassy or consulate in a foreign country to apply for a temporary visa to re-enter the country. Not all embassies, by the way, are located near the cruise port. And moreover, the time it takes to get for the entire process to occur is not quick. You want an example of this? Let's say Cozumel, Mexico. If you were to get stuck in Cozumel because you had too many margaritas, right? I'm not even saying you're in a hurry. You just forget what time it is. Oops, you missed the cruise. You know where the nearest U.S. consulate is to Cozumel, Mexico, a very, very common cruise port? Hint, it's not in Cozumel. It's over seven hours away on the mainland. You'd have to travel there to get your temporary visa and then fly home from somewhere around there in Mexico. Ain't nobody got time for that. And lastly, I wanted to touch upon a subject that we talked about a little bit earlier, and that is the passport card versus the passport book, because a lot of people see the passport card as a more cost-effective way to get a passport without having to spend all of the money for a passport book. As you recall, the passport book allows you to travel by rail or sea, but not by air, and it would satisfy the needs of going on a cruise. In a nutshell, the passport card is a plastic card that fits into your wallet and is accessible for land and sea border crossings between the U.S., Canada, Mexico, Bermuda, and the Caribbean. Passport cards cannot be used for cruises in international home ports, so there's the one problem off the bat. So while this may work for your cruise to the Caribbean, what if you want to go to Europe next year or Australia? That would not work for you. And while the passport card may protect you against certain scenarios and is superior to not having a passport at all, getting a passport book not only provides more coverage, such as flying internationally, but it allows you to travel beyond simply cruises. Don't forget, there's a big world of travel out there. I know we always talk about cruises here, but let's face it, you could fly somewhere else around the world. There's lots of cool vacations you could take. Having a passport book is a great investment in your passport future. So here's what it all boils down to. Cruise lines, all of them, including Royal Caribbean, recommend that every passenger have a passport when traveling, even on the closed-loop cruises where one isn't necessary. It's the best way to prove your identification and citizenship, and it's an essential item if you unexpectedly get stranded somewhere. Most importantly, it also makes it a lot easier for embarkation and disembarkation. There's no better time to apply for a passport than now. It can take a little bit of time for it to process. If you want a passport, Get your paperwork in because sometimes there's a bit of a delay there, so get it in over there. Really, the chief problem with getting a passport is the cost of it because a first-time passport holder cost is probably going to cost about $165 plus the photo fee, and that's per person, and that's a lot for a lot of families, and they're just going to avoid that. But don't forget, an adult passport is good for 10 years, and it's an investment in your travel future. While it's possible to cruise without a passport, I think it's definitely worth the peace of mind to know that you can get off the ship do what you want to do while on vacation, and then be able to get home again should anything unexpected happen. However, if you don't have a passport or don't want to get one, you can still cruise, but you're going to be limited as an American to certain itineraries. Let me know in the comments below if this helped you out. If it did, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. We'll talk again real soon.